The 21st Zen story from the Zen Fresh Zen Poems written by Paul Cripps. The sound of the one hand. Listen to the sound of the one hand clapping. Was throughout my life. Yes. I'm speaking many, many platforms about the sound of the one hand clapping. <laughs> yes. The master of Kenin temple was Mokurai, silent th thunder. He had a little protege named Toyo, who was only 12 years old. Toyo saw the older disciples visit the master's room each morning and evening to receive instruction in Sanzen or personal guidance in which they were given cones to stop mind wandering. Toyo wished to do Sanzen also. Wait a while, said Mokurai. You are too young, but the child insisted, so the teacher finally consented. In every monastery, not once, twice, you have to visit the master morning and evening. And before visiting the master, you cannot directly push the door and go. The rule is, there will be a bell hanged outside the door of the master. You ring the bell three times. And you bow, and once you ring the bell three times, and the master says yes, then you can bow three times, and you can walk inside. And this small protic Toyo was watching all the senior disciples walking into the master's morning and evening to receive instructions. What is happening in the room? He wanted to know. But he asked his senior disciples, and they all said, it is our instructions every day. The master will correct our cones, so he wanted to know about it. So he went and asked the master, can you please teach? And the master said, you're too young, 12 years old. But the Toyo was not willing to move like any other child, so the master agreed. In the evening, little Toyo went at the proper time to the threshold of Mokurai's son's in room. He struck the gong to announce his presence, bowed respectfully three times outside the door and went to sit before the master. Respectful silence. You can hear the sound of two hands when they clap together, said Mukurai. Now show me the sound of one hand. So he bowed and went to his room to consider this problem. All these questions and the masters are given to find out how much you can empty your borrowed knowledge. Like they say, when you go to your master, go with the cup empty. Don't carry the previous day's coffee. Clean the cup. When you go, the master will be able to pour fresh thoughts into it. But if you go with the cup empty and the master pour the fresh coffee and you say the coffee is bad, it's not the master's coffee was bad, it is the one which you carried. So going to your master with the empty heart and empty mind is very important. If you don't go with the empty hand, empty heart and empty mind, that means you carried the waste, the dirt, and that dirt and the new one which you're wanting to hear becomes a two-hand clapping. It stings. It becomes a fight. That's why they say, when you enter the house, to all the men in Japan, they say, when you enter the house, leave your slippers in your mind. Whatever happened in the office, leave it. When you enter the house, you should only have yours. Hence, in India, in all our villages, whether husband or people or guest or anybody, when they enter the village house, they will give you a, a mug full of water to clean your legs and hands. Sometimes you can even take bath. The bathroom will be outside. They, they wash the hands, face, legs, goggle the mouth, drink water, then only enter. And when we people, saints like us or uh, Gurujis like us, go to their places or elders, whatever it is, you can call it. Guruji or Paruji, when they, we go there, they put a plate, yes, they, put, they keep a plate ready. Some will have silver plate, some will have the steel plate, and then we'll ask, they will ask us to keep our feet on it. I do not know, because they, they do not want to insult us by giving the mug and ask us to wash the hands, face, legs, and cup. So they themselves scrub the leg, our feet beautifully, and then put the antibiotic, yellow, red powder, yellow powder, and all these things, and then they do an arati. Yes, ask us to wash our hands. Then they give a tirtha water to drink. Then put a garland, which of all the beautiful flowers, which can kill many of the uh, diseases. 
and then when you enter the house, when you enter the house, then gurus like you will only think of that house. How to help the house because they have done so much. You must, but most of the gurus and the elders forgot about this one. That means you please leave all of that. You, when you come into my house, we feel you are powerful. Hence, people call you guru, a sannyasi, a swamiji, a church father, whatever you call it, a mullah. When you enter the house, when they give so much of respect to the garland, you have to make sure that you have to do 100 percent to rectify the faults, to help them to grow up in life, not to suffer. But that was not happening. Here, he said, what is the sound of the one hand? Uh, you can hear the sound of the two hand, he said. Because people carry the dirt and this one that is there. Too much noise. They are shouting, arguing for argument's sake, logic to logic. There is too much of into your brain is there. And you blabber and it's not reaching anywhere. So the master has told you, you have heard the sound of the two hand clapping. But what is the sound of the one hand clapping? In the evening little toy went at the proper time to the threshold. Boy aboard. From his window he could hear the music of the geishas. Ah, I have it. He proclaimed the next evening when his teacher asked him to illustrate the sound of one hand. Toy began to play the music of the geishas. No, no, said Mokurai. That will never do. Yes. Hearing somebody else's music. You heard. And you, you have already entered into your mind that is geishas music. You have called them by name, by the caste, by the religion, then it is not the sound of the one end. That is not the sound of one end. You have not got it at all. Thinking that such music might interrupt to your mood is about to a quiet place. Made it again. What can the sound of one end be? He happened to hear some water dripping. I have it imagined Toyo. When he next appeared before his teacher, Toyo imitated dripping water. What is that? asked Mukurai. That is the sound of dripping water, but not the sound of one hand. Try again. He heard the sound of the dripping water. So he said, oh, maybe that is a sound. So let me rush up to my master. He rushed up to my master. He said, you have heard the sound of the dripping. You have heard the language. You have interpreted the language. The wife has interpreted the language of the husband. Husband interpreted the language of the wife. They have dissected the language. I keep on telling whenever husband opens the mouth, let it be the gospel of truth coming out from the mouth. The wife opens the mouth, the gospel of truth, or let it be a sankita, a music. Why should you interrupt? Why should we dissect it up and find a meaning into it? The moment you find a meaning, it will become a two hand clapping. Yes. Otherwise, you look at the teacher, you fall in love with the teacher, all answers center into it. You do not even have to study by heart. Look into the nature. Nobody has to teach you what is the nature. You are understood. In vain, Toyo meditated to hear the sound of one hand. He heard the sighting of the wind, but the sound was rejected. Even the wind sound, even is, oh, the sound of the wind. Master said, no. Hear the cry of an owl. This was also refused. The sound of one hand was not the locust. For more than 10 times, Toyo visited Mukurai with different sounds. All were wrong. For almost a year, he pondered what the sound of one hand might be. Everything what he takes and gives to the master and said, that is it. Then it is not it because you're trying to possess, you're trying to hold it. When you hold it, it runs, you keep it open, it stays. When you hold it, it runs, you keep it open, it stays. At last, to you entered the true meditation, transferred to all sounds. I could collect no more, he explained later, so I rejected. I reached the book, soundless sound. Do you realize the sound of the one hand? The sound of the one hand is when you look at a person, ah, you look at your wife, you only see beauty. You only see mother goddess. You don't even use the term mother god. You just melt with your wife. Wife melt with the husband. That day is called the sound of the one hand club. You look at the children, you don't divide the child into girl and a boy like in India. Boys were given the freedom to go or sit to play, and girls say, You shut up, you sit inside. You don't divide the girl and the boy, and even in the dresses. You see a person, you don't call them white and the black. The moment you say white, in the mind is white, it's the sound of two and clapping. The moment you see, I say, Wow, what a beautiful figure. The moment you hear the sound, and you just be the sound. The moment you see the sunlight, you be the sun. You heard the sound of the one hand clapping. The moment you see 
and you ask him what is your name at the moment you say what is the caste from which religion you come from everybody keeps asking where are you from <laughs> i said up is the sky down is the earth in between all is my father's problem sometimes i show my bum and say this is my back <laughs> they say what is your language i said what's mother tongue i said inside my mother's mouth the moment you try to say the moment people ask you the questions you know they are dividing you you don't have to answer the questions then you don't be meditative the moment you transcend all those you are meditative that's the day you have become enlightened the sound of the one and clapping listen <laughs> <laughs>